everyone, thanks for joining us once again on this edition of The Time Out. I'm your host, Charles Fisher. In today's show, we focus our attention on after school sports. We speak with representatives from the government schools. Our Time Out features a treat you don't want to miss. That's what we do, we make it to stay what and be. And we're staying fit with our sports guru, Marcellus Hall. All that on today's show, but first, it's a time. Welcome to a world of art, a world of entertainment, and a kaleidoscope of cultural expression. It's a new season of a &E Showcase. Allow us to take you on a journey and introduce you to the talented artists, musicians, and creatives who share their incredible stories. a &E Showcase. After that short time out, we are back and we are joined by the president of the Government Secondary School Sports Association. I just like to say the G Triple S A, Pharrell Davis, once a national team player for basketball. Mm -hmm. Now she's the phys ed teacher over there at the C H Reeves Junior High School, who's been dominating high school sports for quite some time. Thanks a lot. Welcome to the time out. First time here. Yes, so thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Excited about this year. Excited about this year. Yeah, very excited. Well, talking about excitement, the GSSA is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that and what are the plans? Uh, biggest um, plan we have this year is to honor our retirees that put in um, 30 plus years, um, not just teaching um, physical education, but also assisting with the development of the GSSA. Um, and so we're excited for, for that. Um, and so we, we have something planned. Um, black and white attire um, for that at the end of the year. Okay, and what is the association mandate and how do how do they operate? This is your what, third time as president? This is my um, third or fourth time president, uh -huh. yes, 10 years. Um, our mandate is to um, get our much kids involved in high school sports in the country. Um, you know, 16 schools and we try our best to ensure that our, all our sports are up and running. Um, we started in September with cross country on the volleyball. Now we're in our basketball season. And so our mandate is to try to get every child to participate in after school sports and develop them as much as we can as coaches. It is the government secondary school sports association. We have government schools in Abaco, you have government schools in Freeport, mm -hmm. but your, your mandate is only New Providence, right? Yes, it is only New Providence. How is that? Um, it, it's, it's kind of funny because I wish we had everybody involved because you know the more government schools involved, the better it, it will be. Um, but hopefully in the near future, I'm hope, hopefully that we'll see that come, you know, in the forefront with getting all our government schools involved in one association. Is it challenging running the G Triple S A, especially from a female's perspective? Because we mm -hmm. know we've had a lot of male and they know how to deal with the mm -hmm. same thing, mm -hmm. but they might want to run over for a run. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is difficult um, running um, as a female, um, but, you know, most of our female, we, we, you know, the quote is we are very organized. Um, to me, this is a business um, for me, and I run it as such. Um, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of time, um, but at the end of the day, we as coaches know that um, our job is to develop these young people um, and to get them somewhere, you know, um, after they finish grade 12. And so that's our, our, our mandate. How important is it for after school sports for the student athlete? It's very important. Um, me being a, also a former student of CH Reeves, and also, you know, play every spot under um, Mr. Jack Knowles. It, it helped me and prepared me for where I am today because most of us had the opportunity to go off to school on scholarship once we play any type, any sports in, in, in high school system. Um, even today now, um, me being a coach, um, it's very important. Um, it opened many doors for our young people, um, especially those who say, um, want to leave the ghetto. You know, I use that as my um, motto when I actually come in to see if you um, 20, 15 years ago, and I told, tell my students, I say, use the talent to get you out, you know, and so most of them has done that, and it's a good opportunity for us to um, have sports, to, it's a way out for our kids, it's a way out, and, and, and each day we're seeing it, we're seeing it. The pandemic, how has that affected school oh, yeah. sports, because you were off for like two mm -hmm. years, now you're still trying to get things in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been very difficult, um, not be able to have after school sports. Um, it was so critical that year is a lot of kids couldn't even participate 
or even have the opportunity to get those scholarships that they really wanted to, to expose themselves to actually go off to school. And so to be back now after that two years break, um, it's a blessing. Um, I must say the comeback year was last year was excellent. Um, the levels of play was extremely well. Um, and so um, I, I'm happy that we are back and we continue on where we left off. Talking about the level of play, you sit on the sidelines sometimes and some people complain about the level of play in some sports, one like they call the sports name, but mm -hmm. it's like they don't know what they're doing. The coaches mm -hmm. are not teaching the right fundamentals. So right. you have a problem with that? Yes, I do. Uh, I do have a problem with that um, uh, because um, at the end of the day, we should be able to teach the basic fundamentals of each of the sports. Um, and so that's something that is always a sore point um, for us. And so we always, you know, tell our coaches, please, you know, put the time into our kids, train them, develop them the way they need to be developed. And so and if you need extra courses or um, to, to uh, equip yourself with training or developing, you know, there's always um, ways that we could do so to help us develop, develop our kids a little more. And so, yeah, it is a sore point. And some games you go to, you see the level of play is not what it should be. Um, but we have to impress on our coaches that, hey, we got to put the time in and get these kids to the next level. One thing I can say about the g said is they make use of facilities. They play basketball mm -hmm. in the gyms, mm -hmm. not compared to some other associations on the hard surface on right. the outside. Is there enough facilities for you guys? No, it's not. It's not enough facilities at all. Um, there's always a the fight. And I always say to people at the g should say do not own any facilities. Um, it's a sore point again to us well because we do need more gyms. Everybody wants to go two rounds in basketball, two rounds in this, two rounds in that. But the reality is we don't have enough facility to do so. Um, and so when one sport's finished, we got to move on to the next. And then sometimes the gym is not available for us to use. And so sometimes, you know, we have PD meeting, we have functions in the gym, so sometimes our games have to be postponed. You know, so we do need more facilities and I pray and hoping that we do get some in the near future. And by having that, that means we have more games. Let's get back to the quality of pay, play. Uh, we, we noticed in the high schools in the United States, they hire special instructors. If you're a baseball coach, you're a baseball mm -hmm. coach. You, you, you can't do that because, you, like you were telling me off here, two of you for 800 and something students. We try to make it mandatory that everybody be um, certified and each of the sports that they want to, to coach. That's mandated. Um, and then we have on, ongoing courses, certification courses or refresher courses to, to ensure that our, our coaches are updated to change of rules or regulations. And so I think we need more of that actually ongoing um, to make sure that we are up to par in coaching our kids. And so I would love to get our kids to the level at you know, the United States kids is, um, but also, also start with the primary school level as well, developing primary school up to junior high, junior high up to senior high. And so once we all come together as coaches and say, hey, we got to do the extra to get our kids to the next level, then I think we will see better talent in our kids. My guest on this edition of the Time Out, GSSSA President Pharrell Davis. Much more coming up after the break. Time out. You're not going to do very well in this court if you keep cutting me off. I've already paid him $500 and I noticed we haven't spoken about the $500 that I paid him. I did not receive any of my money. I didn't know her like that. I asked the question and then you answer. But I spent that, that on my Mr. car. that, Mr. Roll, that is the order. I joined an ASU that was led by Mr. Wilkinson. At the end of it, I would have received $5,000. However, I did not receive any of my money. You would understand the importance of a wedding day for a bride. Uh, well, I've never been a bride. The decision is legally pending. All right. Welcome back to the table with my special guest today, Varel Davis, president of the GSSSA. Are there any changes to the GSSSA curriculum this year? Any sports added, any taken out? Um, I know that we, um, in the near future, we would like to add in um, flag football. Cool. That's something that we're looking um, forward to do so. And also um, a little bit of sailing as well. 
um, we're being introduced. Um, we're always looking for ways to, to, to help our kids, especially the ones who are not involved in the core sports, like track, the basketball, the volleyball, but at least they can play flag football. Um, the more opportunity for our kids, the better our kids gonna gonna get and have. And so we're looking for more ways to, to, to get our kids involved in, in different, and introducing different sports to them. And I can say that we have a little flag football thing at CH Reef now, and our kids are very excited. Something new and different. Mm -hmm. And boys and girls can play that sport. Doesn't matter the size, you know, it's, it's just a fun thing for them to do. And there's scholarship available again um, for flag football as well. The big question most people are asking, will there ever be, because back in the days, unification between mm -hmm. the private schools and the government schools, and have you guys even ever talk? Yes, we had some uh, communication in the past about um, combining us in terms of our sports. And I think it would go extremely well if we, if we could do so, because that made more games. You know, um, instead of us having eight games or seven games, it'd be more 15 to 20 games. Mm -hmm. If the private schools, um, you know, get involved with the joint um, operation. But um, hopefully in the near future, we'd really love to see that. Because most of the time when you see private schools, it's in tournaments. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping that um, we can bridge that gap between us and, and, and BISS. If anything you would change with the teacher, I say, what would it be? Um, I would like to see more facilities. Um, that would help greatly. Um, I'd like to see us go more rounds than just one to get them playing more games because at the end of the day, after you hit the sixth game, you see the improvement and then you have two more games and you're done. And so I'm hoping that we have um, more facilities to have more games. And so we have more better quality of athletes in our system. We're talking sports, but I understand there's a big cheerleading competition coming oh, up yes. in March. Tell us about that. Yes, um, we had cheerleading in the past, um, but now, you know, it is back now. Um, we have all eight schools, senior schools will be participating, and we have five junior schools so far um, will be participating. The date is March 16th okay. um, at Second Rice Gymnasium. And um, if you look at our games recently, you see every game, especially our senior schools, had cheerleading. Um, cheering for their teams and so they are ready, they are prepared, they are excited and so that's another um, um, activities that we, we're trying to do um, for girls um, and so they are very excited and I'm excited to see who are going to be this year um, champions in the cheerleading competition. What are the expectations for the teacher for the you wind down this calendar year? Um, expectation, expectation is to um, continue with um, all our sports and I um, we are up next after track and field. We have softball for girls, baseball for boys. Then we have and our soccer, we have a soccer. And so we are trying to see how best we get our, our, our sporting program um, continue on until we are done in um, late part of May. And I can tell you this, um, schools are excited. The kids are excited. Um, I think after the pandemic, like you say, they're more eager to get involved in sports. You know, I can speak for CHU, I mean, we have 60 children every day. And so they, they want them to participate. They want to join a sport. You know, they want to get involved. And so we were trying, the more kids we get involved, the better, you know, the society would be actually. Um, and so hopefully we'll, we'll continue on with, with our, our sports in that aspect. Is it fair that basketball gets six to 10 weeks, soccer get one tournament, volleyball get one week, this one get one week? How, how you balance that everybody? Um, in the past it was like that, but now if you see everybody, um, in our season, have a season, deserve a season. Um, basketball, you know, basketball and track is always the, our biggest entity, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so um, we try to balance it off because volleyball right now this year, we had an excellent season. I think it's the most tiring we had in a very long time. And then we also had um, cross country, if you look at that, competitive, very competitive this year. And so as the year, goes on and progress, you see that teams are getting better and better and better. And the RCR are improving and, 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 and so we're hoping that it will continue um, on. We wish you the most success, Chicha Palace President, four time around. Going back again? Um, I'm thinking about it, not sure. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Leave it right there. Thanks a lot, Morel, for joining us on the time of <laughs>
out of fire had erupted in the other end. At my old school, they used to have chair competitions every year with the PE houses, and I would always wish to dress up in the costumes and compete against the other houses to win the trophy, and dancing just always seemed fun to me. As young as four, I've always been fascinated by the art of dance itself. Whether it be chair, jazz, whatever it was, I was always in the limelight of dance, and it always was an inspiration to me. You had to have a two point, so we had to check your GPA. Then you had to be in be good behavioral standing, so we had to talk to admin to make sure your name wasn't in, in any problems. Then we did a trial practice, and once we were able to complete the routine after those two steps, then you made the team. They come up with their ideas, they bring it to me and Miss L. Lockhart, who is also a coach, and we just make sure that everything is appropriate and everything reflects what it is Mystic Marlin stand for. You all know that? I know. Okay, do it half off. Do it then. Learning the routines was never really hard. Like, it always came natural to me. Once you are disciplined and you show good sportsmanship, I think that you would make a good cheerleader. I was here to like to thank my guest Pharrell Davis, but we're going to head north to see what's happening up there. Sports in the Bahamas is at an all-time high, especially here in Grand Bahama, the high school and the primary school level. Ravana Ferguson, who is actually the vice president of the Primary School Sports Association, understands the value of the after school element. It helps in our kids' development, and he said it better than anybody else. The future in sports is bright here on the island. Only so much as a PE teacher we can do with the limited amount of time we have to practice, and then games. Games are only so much. So, Development of the kids is, I would say, is lacking because the season for our kids is so short. But uh, the particular seasons for the actual sport is actually longer than our, our physical education season. So we have basketball season. That's one thing I applaud the new board for the Grand Bahama uh, Basketball Association for because they're about to introduce a avenue for primary school sports for basketball. And obviously, we know we have track season that runs straight till June. Uh, baseball is doing the same thing, and softball is doing the same thing. But all, in all in all, if it wasn't for the after-school programs, such as the track clubs, the baseball associations, the softball associations, as well as the uh, basketball associations, our kids wouldn't be as far as developed as they actually are. Desmond Shaky Hall is the athletic director at Jack Haywood High School. He says it's because of programs like they have here at the track, his athletes are developing. The good thing is for him that other coaches can help in that process. When we look at the after school programs, the competitive nature that we have here in Grand Bahama helps to make kids uh, 
put more time into the development of their area expertise, where we talk about basketball, whether it's baseball, whether it's volleyball. Um, and it also keeps them uh, functioning from idle time. Um, and it gives them a, a different means of outlet. Uh, we also have to take in consideration these after-school programs help with them uh, to develop as individuals, both as it pertains to academics and athletics, if they plan to go to school in the foreseeable future. The Sunline Baptist Academy Stingers have it all pat. Why? It's an all-age school, and thereby the kids can then move from the preschool to the high school level. Charlene Hamilton says for her, it's just great to see them develop along the way. I honestly believe that the after school program works wonder. It's an area and an avenue where kids can actually display the different skills and talents that they would have learned during the regular teaching hours, which you know is not a lot. So they get that opportunity to learn a little bit more and to put more energy into it. It helps for those students who see themselves excelling, especially at the national level. So they get that opportunity to showcase their talents. So we are really fun with that and we welcome it and we appreciate it. Another reason we're at why I would say after school programs is something that is beneficial and important. We are living now in a community where um, violence is has now become rampant and it gives them an avenue where they can use that energy positively and give them time just to do other things and keep themselves out of trouble. Make no mistake about it, the afternoon school programs is beneficial for the high school and the primary school athletes. Here in Grand Bahama, it's an added dimension. For the time out, I'm Ricardo Lightborn. Let's now get in shape with the fitness guru, Marcellus Hart. Hey, what's up again, fit fam? Coach Marcellus here, upliftmindandbody.com. Once again, here at Physique Total Fitness on Dunmore Avenue to bring you another fit tip for time out. So, Here's your tip for today. If you're talking about making those changes from a nutritional standpoint to get more healthy, you don't have to be drastic measures. Do it one bit at a time. We're talking about incremental changes, right? Not making moderation and not deprivation. When you do deprivation, which means taking it completely out of your diet, a lot of times you're gonna have those cravings. And of course, what happens when you have the cravings is one day you're gonna get a binge, you're gonna feel guilty, and it's a vicious cycle. So what you do is make small changes, and those small changes are gonna make all the differences in terms of reducing calorie intake and getting you back on track as far as nutrition is concerned. What am I talking about? Well, let's say for instance, you're a coffee drinker like me. All right, drink five cups of coffee, per week, that's one per day, right? You don't wanna go crazy on it. But let's imagine this. If you usually put three teaspoonfuls of sugar in a cup of coffee, what if you reduce that by one? So that's five teaspoonfuls of sugar reduced by the course at the end of the week. That's about 800 calories to maybe even more. So imagine you do that cumulatively over the course of a month. Think of how many calories you just saved. You do the same thing with rice. If I usually have two spoonfuls of rice, how about I have a spoonful and a half or one spoonful? Things like that will all add up cumulatively over the course of time and you'll see amazing results rather than trying to take it completely out of your diet, unless of course a doctor has recommended that. But usually if you make those small changes to get you going, you'll find over time that you'll start to see those results. I'm Coach Marcellus, once again from upliftmindandbody.com here at Physique Total Fitness and we'll see you again next time. Well, that's been another edition of The Time Out. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Much more to come.